Hello everyone. Today we are starting another video series. Mainly we are focusing on algorithm development within this series. So our focus is to discuss interview algorithm challenges as well as uh, someone can prepare for online coding test using our video series. So uh, as per the today's topic, we choose Fibonacci sequence, which is a very popular sequence in coding. So let's try to have a look how we can achieve that sequence development using Java and Python in various methods. Okay, so here you can see the Fibonacci sequence 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 like that. So uh, as per the definition, the 0th element is 0, first element is 1, then uh, you can add adjacent two values to get the next element. So 0 plus 1 equals to 1, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, 1 plus 2 equals to 3. Similarly, you can get the sequence. So let's see how we can get these outputs. The ninth element uh, is 34 and 10th element is 55 like that. Uh, let's see how we can achieve in different ways in different methods for different language like Java and Python. Okay, let's start the coding part. So this is my Java project. I will create my uh, project file here. So Fibonacci. So create the project file. So let's write some test case first, then we can easier to uh, troubleshoot and uh, do the coding part. So we will give this as a test class one you may need to add here you need to class path until like show like this so I will put some assets asset equals asset equals the expected value as we see in the ninth value should be 34 so let's say 34 should be returned when we call uh, fib function with 9 so this is how we can uh, develop easier so now you can create a method fib inside the uh, inside our method so I will put this like in here as per the first method I will use a recursive approach for this uh, series because uh, if we see in these uh, values, so each value is equal to the addition of previous two. So if you go to F9, so that means if it is F7 and F8. So then F8 means F7 and F6. Like that, you have to come to the f 0 element to calculate each and every element. So, uh, so the first two cases for the uh, FIB is N is less than uh, let, let's say if the value is equals to 0 what we need to return we need to return 0 here because the 0th element is 0 else if if the n, n is equal to 1 then you need to return 1 so this is the two uh, given values so hereafter you we need to uh, calculate ourselves so else you need to call like next one is fn right so fn equals fn minus 1 plus f n minus 2 this is the equation so you have to return the previous value and the one before value so you have to return calculate the Fibonacci value again we need to call the fib method with n minus 1 and call again the fib method with n minus okay so this is the method we can call so let's uh, run this one so you can find 
what is the value it is fail or not you can see once it is run yes it passed we can uh, print it here and see the value as well 9 let's try print it as well then you can see it here yes it prints the 34 and it validates the with the 34 as well so uh, i will put another like uh, another value uh, the 10th value is 55 then run again yes that is also passed both these are correct so looking at this code you can see uh, we can refactor a bit for these uh, two conditional statements so n equals 0 you can return 0 n equals 1 you can return 1 so you can simplify it like this so when the n is less than or equals to 1 you can return n so in this uh, episode uh, in this uh, fibonacci development we can uh, just forget the minus value let's assume the all uh, coming incomings are positive values so you can write the fibonacci sequence in recursion in this method but with the recursion method you can see we uh, the same fibonacci value we calculate again and again so when the n is a higher value you have a higher complexity of uh, time usage so it, it will be exponential time complexity so i have written here another uh, method to discuss with you guys so in this method uh, we use a for loop instead of a uh, uh, recursion so i get the zeroth element as a uh, the first element as b so a is equal to 0 b is equal to 1 so i have get another uh, variable c here let's discuss so when n is equal to 0 you can directly return a so that part is okay so let's check uh, this for loop it is start with 2 so the n is equal to 1 it will not go inside this for loop then return b value b value means 1 it will return 1 then when n is equal to 2 or more it will go inside to this for loop so uh, you have to calculate previous two values and uh, equals to our other variable that means first value second value and uh, added them to the next value so then you can uh, replace the first and second values as this so uh, for the next iteration b should be our next a c should be our next b then you can iterate uh, until n then at the end you can return b that is our nth fibonacci so this is the other method we can run it for these two values uh, uh, the same test case for this one uh, let's print for the fib2 as well let's try what will print it here and need to uh, pass it through so 35 printed and the test case is passed so these two methods are uh, written in java for this fibonacci so for our next step so we need to write those two methods in uh, python for the time saving purpose i uh, pre-write uh, those two methods to discuss with you guys so this is the first uh, fibonacci uh, first method so that is using the uh, recursion you can use the syntax uh, uh, if elif uh, for this first two uh, when n is equal to 0 it returns 0 n is equal to 1 it returns 1 then uh, you can return the recursively added uh, uh, values for n minus 1 and n minus 2 so the other method we talk about with the for loop uh, to reduce the uh, time complexity of this recursion so here same as previous i take a as 0 b as 1 and i have another variable c here so n is equal to 0 return a n is equal to 1 return b so uh, the next one you can say here uh, for other values the, it goes for this for loop it goes from 
2 to n plus 1 value this n plus 1 is uh, excluded the only it uh, runs for n so the c value is as previously uh, the addition of the a and b then our next a should be current b next b should be current c so you can go the for loop up to n then return the b value same as previously so i have written it in python to uh, see you guys the syntax correctly so we can print the ninth value uh, like this uh, let's have run this one with these two yes these two both are printing 34 so this is the uh, python script for uh, our fibonacci two methods uh, that we discuss so i will upload these two uh, scripts uh, in the video so any other request you can uh, comment here so we we will uh, consider for the next uh, video any new algorithm or any uh, interview question we can discuss uh, let us know so till then goodbye thank you